In this video, I am going to show you some of the basics to color correcting and how I do my color correcting. Hello everyone, I am Budget Recording and on this channel I try and help your audio sound better and in this case your video look better. For those of you that do not know, color correcting is the process of taking colors shot by your camera and making the colors look more accurate. So if I take this scene and then I put a color correction over it, it now looks a lot more vivid uh, and it's not to show any artistic style, it's not to set a mood of anything. This is purely to make the colors look better. Now that you know what color correcting is, let's actually do some color correcting. You just saw that clip. It looked okay at first. The rocks looked fine. You could tell it was grass. It wasn't just stuff. Uh, but it looked really washed out, especially compared to the next one. So in this part, I'm going to show you how I color corrected this specific clip. Uh, and this will be in my video another shot cut. It is a free and open source video, on, or it's really nice. I'm not completely sure how well this will work in other programs, but for this, it works great. So first, I will add a filter. I've got some of my favorites uh, selected up here. So first, you may think color grade, and that could work, but what I prefer to do first is hue, light, and saturation. So this looks way too light in my opinion. So I can take this lightness slider and just drag it down. That looks about good at 89%. Uh, and some of this still is just guess and check for me. Um, the hue looks okay, the colors are just fine. Because if you look at this, hue turns the colors weird colors. I mean, if you've got blue grass and a purple sky, this could look great, but I don't think that's how anyone has it. But it still looks a bit washed out, and saturation can help with that. So I'm just bringing it up to about 130-ish. And then now we can try the color uh, grading. So with the color grading, you have three... RGB circles and a black and white slider. There's the shadows, midtones, and highlights. The shadows are the darker parts, like this would probably be considered the shadow. Those spots up there would be a shadow. It still affects all of it, but primarily those spots. So if you look at the dark spots, those in this tend to be green. So I will bring this over to the green a little bit. And then the midtones aren't the super bright things, but they aren't the dark areas. So probably the sky in this case would be considered a midtone, which I would then make bluish if I can select it. The trick with this is to not go quite too far, but just enough to get the right colors out of it. And then the highlights are the really bright parts, so in this it would probably be like these rocks, those rocks, because that's the brightest part. So I will bring that over to more of a yellow area. Yeah, that didn't really affect very much. But what I can do is I can also use this slider to make those a little bit brighter. Then you can always adjust these sliders. So the mid-tones, I think those need to be a bit darker. And then the shadows look just fine. And so then there's that. Uh, and then if you want to go further, you can like adjust white balance.
you can adjust the contrast. Uh, 100% is apparently all white, but like that's just too far. It makes the darks too dark and takes out any differences. But if you go a little bit before there, it's almost just black and white. So here is before the color correction. Here's the color grade. It didn't make a huge difference. Here, the biggest difference was the hue lightness saturation. Then the color grading added the color to it. And then the contrast, I guess, didn't do like anything. So sometimes you'll have to delete stuff like that, but that is exactly how I went through the color grading process, color correcting process. And then if you wanted to, I'm just gonna copy these to be safe. I'm going to do it with just the color grade filter, remove this filter, and just see how I can do it. So first off, the shadows, those look okay still. Let's actually start with the midtones because that's most of the shot. And then we'll darken up that a little bit. And then the highlights need to be much more blue. That went too far, so we'll go back to that. Lighten this up, because it's definitely too dark. And it's too green. So we'll come back off that a little bit. Let's try and just darken up the shadows a little bit. Make the shadows... Um, actually, we'll make the shadows green. Reset that. About there looks good. And then darken that up. And then the midtones should be more blue. And if you go too far, it just all becomes a shade of blue. So don't do that. That looks pretty good. Could lighten up a little bit more. And the highlights should probably be a bit more yellow. Now, this looks better than it did, but it it's a bit too green still. Now it looks too yellow. But now I'm almost back where I started. So that is why I like adding the hue lightness saturation. Let's see if we can do this with just the contrast. Almost. Uh, so then if I were to grab a color grading, uh, make the midtones more blue, and then darken everything up a bit more. That looks almost as good as it did before. Like with the hue light and the saturation, that looks really good. The highlights are that part's really bright, so I'll try and darken that if I can. Maybe I just need to turn down the contrast. I bet that's what it is. And that looks really good, especially compared to the before. So if you have a shot that looks like this, just mess around with contrast, color grade, and hue lightness saturation, and just try and do what you think would work, and eventually it will come out right. So... I was thinking about what I wanted this channel to be like, and I realized that gear videos aren't that great unless you have all the gear you're talking about. So that's why I want to change how I do gear recommendations. I'm going to 
throw in some creator essential, as I'm calling it, at the end of each video. And I'll just talk about some thing that is, I think, important. So, and it will relate to the video. So, in this case, with the color correcting, uh, first, if you have a computer powerful enough to run DaVinci Resolve, I would recommend getting that. You can get a free version. It is available for Linux, Mac, and Windows. Uh, and then, if you don't have a powerful enough computer, say something like a gaming computer from like the past five years should be enough. Uh, anything in that area, if it would work, but if it's like a work computer, it probably won't have the necessary hardware. It takes a uh, OpenCL compatible GPU. If you know what that means, great. Um, so if you don't have a powerful enough computer, you I would recommend getting Shotcut, which is exactly what I did the tutorial in. I do all of my editing in Shotcut, but Resolve has a bunch more features, and the features that they both have, Resolve does it better in most cases. Unless you're going for simplicity, in which case uh, Shotcut is definitely going to be the better option. So that has been Creator Essentials. If you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you leave a like. If you're new here on Budget Recording, make sure you subscribe. See you next time.